Hello, Salesforce Johanna Walters954 here, and in this video, I'm going to be continuing the series on ApexSandbox.io. If you've never heard of Apex Sandbox, it is a place where you can go and practice Apex, which is really great. So in this video, I'm going to be working on problem number four, number difference. If you haven't worked on this before, go ahead and pause the video, really pause it and give it a try. If you've tried and you're looking to see if our answers are correct or the same or different and you know how I did it, you can continue watching. So let's jump into it. The question is asking, we are need to implement a function that calculates the difference of two integers and that difference needs to be the absolute value. If you've never heard of absolute value, it basically need, means it needs to be a positive number uh, after the calculation. So if we have something like five minus three, it's gonna equal three, right? If we have three minus five, it's gonna equal negative three. But if we take the absolute value of this, it's still gonna equal three. So it's still a positive number. Now that's not the technical definition. I'm not a uh, mathematics person or anything like that, but this is how the, in the general form, the, the number needs to yield uh, a positive number, even if you subtract it um, and it's a negative number. So. If we look at our first hint, it's telling us that we can use an if statement and basically determine which one is larger. So let's think about that for a second. If we get five and two as our parameters, we need to decide, hey, which one is, is greater? Okay, that's five. So we're gonna say five minus two. And that works because this is gonna yield three. Let's say that we get two comma five. Well, two is, or we're going to skip over two and five is greater. So we're going to start with five as the first number again, and then that's going to equal three. And then this is always going to be a positive value. If you decide which one is the largest one, let's start coding this up. The first thing I want to do is hold a value that we can have for our results because we're going to be doing some mathematics. So we can, we can hold this value. So let's say result equals zero. That's going to be our first, that's going to be our container. And then we need to do that decision based on uh, which one of these values is greater. So we're getting in A and B. So if A is greater than B, we want to then uh, do our subtraction, right? With A first, so A minus B. We need to store this variable result equals uh, a minus B. So this will yield a positive number depending on uh, which one is larger. Next, um, we only have one other case, right? We, we could say if B is greater than A, then we want to do, you know, this, the same thing, but in reverse. We want to take B minus A. And then, as we remember from our first lecture, we have to have a return value because this is asking, this is a method that is asking uh, for some sort of return value of the type. This one is of the type in integer. So let's run this and see what happens. It looks like everything passed. So that is great. Even with, you know, using uh, negative numbers, the subtraction still works. What I want to then show here is if we, we can kind of simplify this a little bit more. We don't need an else statement because if A is greater than B, th there's only two options for that one. Either A is greater than B or B is greater than A. Uh, if they match exactly the same, the else statement will take care of it as well, or it'll just return zero at the end of it. Um, so this, this will definitely work. So let's run this poof. And then some other things just to kind of see how small we can get it. We can actually just return. I think we can return these values. Maybe not. Maybe not with the zero. Let's see what happens here. Let's just clean this up and, and try this now. Nope. This one works as well. Um, even with the, the numbers matching exactly because uh, they're still going to they're still going to do the subtraction. So zero minus zero or the same number minus the same number is still zero. So this is one of the cleanest versions you can get with it, but let's take a look at hint number two, which says that we may be able to use the math class and the absolute value of the math class to uh, try this out. If you've never 
taking a peek at this, let's do a search here. And we want to use the math class Apex Reference Glide. And we are searching for abs. So it returns the absolute value of a specific decimal. And basically, we pass in a value for it, and it will return the absolute value of it. So it can be a negative number, it can be a positive number, but if we give it some sort of value, it will return the absolute, oh, too far down there, we, it will return the absolute value of it. So thinking about this a little bit more, all we need to do is our uh, arithmetic operation here, and then call the math class and return that value. So let's do... Uh, return math abs and a minus b and there we have it let's let's give this a run now well re really quickly we are doing it when we think about expressions this expression is going to go off first it's going to do our subtraction and then whatever value we get let's say we get like negative three uh, then the math class is going to get called on it math.abs and it's going to return a positive number or three let's run this to see what happens and poof, we got it right. This is the simplest way that I can think of doing it, and it comes from the hints as well. Let me know if you have another way, or you tried something different, or if your code looks a little different. One other thing is that I am now putting all of my code uh, for the Apex Sandbox on a GitHub repository, so be sure to check that out if you're looking for uh, my examples, my like how I, how I built them out, and you don't have to copy and uh, try to follow along exactly um, in the code. And then lastly, I did find the the uh, Apex Sandbox Salesforce group. So go ahead and join that. I'm, I'm in there as well, a place where you can discuss problems and see some of the solutions for the Apex Sandbox questions and just interact with other developers that are interested in this type of stuff. So that's going to be it for this question. And once again, let me know in the comments how you built this out, if we did it the same way or a different way. If you're struggling a little bit with these questions, definitely check out my course on the fundamentals of Apex. It'll go over a lot of the things that we've touched on here and a lot more. So like classes, methods, the math class, stuff like that, if statements, all that good stuff. Um, and as always, I'm Walters954. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, I believe in you.